Hello YouTube and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Mount and Blade 2 Bannerlord. And this is going to be the first of my new guides for the game. Because I did a bunch of guides for the game back when it first released. And you know, like whatever it was two years ago in early access. And now we're going to be doing some for... Uh, the full release of the game since we actually have the 1.0 version now. Uh, so I'll be doing just a whole bunch of guides. So if you want to see that type of stuff, subscribe to the channel and you'll see it as I release it. And today we're going to be starting off with the best heavy cavalry units. So I've picked out the top five based on their weapons, armor, stats, abilities, anything extra they come with. Uh, sometimes I factor in how easy it is to recruit them because if it's, if it's a really good unit but they're incredibly hard to recruit, they're not going to make my ranking even if I mention them. So with all that in mind, let's just start it off with... Number five at the Kuzate Heavy Heavy Lancer. And so you can see the Kuzate Heavy Lancer is from the main Kuzate Nomad, which is going to be your the, the basic infantry type recruits that you'll get from most Kuzate settlements. So these ones are easy to get is basically my point here. And if you want to upgrade to them, you go from the Kuzate Nomad down to the Kuzate Tribal Warrior, which starts out as a mounted archer. And then instead of following that mounted archer path, you go down the pikeman path, basically, or the uh, lancer path, I should say. Horseman, lancer, and then heavy lancer. And so the advantages of this area is if you want to do a heavy cavalry playthrough, Kuzates are always good to start with because right after the Nomad, you have cavalry. Cavalry. Now, obviously, you are going to need horses to upgrade them, so it's not like you could just upgrade, you know, from the Nomad to the Tribal Warrior if you don't have any horses available. So it's not the easiest thing in the world to do, but it is pretty simple. You just keep all the horses you get throughout the game. That's what I do. I just keep basically every horse I ever get. So anyway, pretty easy to get these. Lots of settlements to get them at. It's not a special troop tree, and it is just the basic one. And once you get her up to the Kuzate Heavy Lancers, they're a pretty dang good troop. So you can see, I'll just hover over their uh, stats right there so you can see them a little bit. But basically, their horses have pretty dang good armor some of the best kuzate horse armor you can get they have a balanced pole arm and one-handed stat and those are the two weapons that they use they have that nice long pole arm and they also have a one-handed weapon and a shield so both of those are at 130 which is pretty dang good that's going to be top tier units once you get above 100 in this game for any of these you're dealing with pretty solid troops so up at 130 you're definitely in the gold uh another advantage is one that you just get with all kuzate cavalry troops and it's that the horses are pretty dang fast and they ride them very well you can see that our uh, our riding skill there is 150 there so that's pretty good a lot of your cavalry units aren't going to be that high the kuzates are the best or some of the best in all areas of cavalry so it definitely pulls through here i adjusted the the audio a little bit because the music was getting a bit loud and i felt like maybe i was yelling but so that's number five here the kuzate heavy lancer the other option is a secondary so another one that takes the same number five spot here because it's pretty much the same stat wise and everything is going to be the second Second to last for the line of Vlandian noble infantry or uh, cavalry. So you get these through the Vlandian squire, which are a little bit harder to get your hands on than the standard Vlandian recruits. But they are, you can find certain villages and everything where they always have one or two people that has Vlandian squires. And then it's pretty simple from there to just get a whole bunch of them. But the second to last in this chain is about tied with the Kuzate uh, heavy lancers. So one way to go, if you don't want to be a Kuzate and you want some good cavalry, the Vlandians are known for their cavalry. And if you follow this path, the second to last is takes the number five spot. So uh, I would say that as far as the standard Kuzate heavy cavalry goes, it's not... It, it doesn't really beat out the second to last Vlandian cavalry by that much. So that's something to consider here. For stats on this one, you can see again, we have riding of 130, so a little bit lower for that, but the pole arm is 160, so higher for that. 100 is 130. Uh, so the same, but this one is a mace, so it does a little bit extra damage against, or a little bit better damage against heavily armored opponents and shields and stuff. This one also has really good armor on the person and on the horse. So number five, the Kuzate Heavy Lancer, or the Vlandian Champion. I only give the Kuzate Heavy Lancer a slight edge because they're a little bit easier to recruit, because it's not a noble troop tree, it's just the regular one. So that's number five. All right, and so at number four, we've got another one that's kind of a tie between two different troops, and the first one we're going to look at here is the Imperial cataphract so this is the second to last cavalry troop in the imperial uh, vigla troop tree so again these are going to be specific recruits it's not just your regular imperial peasants that you get you have to find the imperial viglas it's going to be the same thing as the vlandian champions you just find certain villages that will have the uh, imperial viglas available to them and i would point you out to specific ones but i've played a whole bunch of different playthroughs and they don't always seem to be the same basically you just check out villages and towns until you find people that you can recruit troops from that have these and then they will always have them. But anyway, uh, the second to last upgrade in this line is the Imperial Cataphract, and they're pretty 
dang good. They've got really good horse armor, as most of your Imperial Cavalry does. It's the heavy scale barding on that, which is really great. Overall, like most Imperial troops, you're going to have real solid stats on these. So they typically come equipped with a polearm and a one-handed weapon, and you can see on here that our polearm is 160, so a nice high polearm skill, and then we have 130 for the one-handed. Riding of 130, so again, not Kuzate level, but still pretty dang good. It's going to be top tier for as far as most heavy polearm cavalry goes in the game. Because it's an Imperial unit, even though it's the special troop tree, they are pretty easy to get because there are three times as many, roughly, Imperial settlements as any other faction in the game because there are three different imperial factions so there are just a lot of places you can recruit imperial troops from so they are pretty easy to get your hands on but the other good thing about cataphracts is that they also double passably well as an infantry unit so if you're using them during a siege uh, on either side they actually work pretty well for that because they've got decently high athletics for cavalry of 80 they've got a good one-handed skill and come with a, a shield and a one-handed weapon and uh, also nice heavy armor that's a, a benefit of the imperial cataphract as a cavalry troop they're excellent but they also d uh, double passably well as an infantry unit the other one for number four is going to be the second to last for the azurai uh, noble troop tree so basically these ones are going to be the same as the last ones and as the Vlandian champions you have to look for azurai youth they will just be at certain settlements but once you do you can upgrade them the azurai veteran ferris is the it ties for the fourth spot for a lot of the same reasons as the imperial cataphract they've got a, these ones have a higher riding so they do have that ability they're a little bit quicker and more nimble than the imperial unit the horse is very well armored the person himself isn't as well armored as the imperial cataphract which is why i give the edge to that one but still decently well armored has a nice long pole arm does usually come equipped with a one-handed weapon and has throwing javelins so this one can double as a skirmish Mature type troop, which is why a lot of people are going to like the veteran Ferris. Our pole arm on this is 130, one handed is 130, and we have throwing of 80 for our throwing weapons. So, um, a very versatile unit. A little bit harder to get because there are less Azurai settlements than Imperial settlements. And like I said, you have to find specifically ones that have the youth and upgrade them to here. But if you want to play as the Azurai, this is a solid option. So, the number four spot is a tie between the Imperial Cataphract and the Azurai veteran Ferris with a slight edge towards the Imperial Cataphract. And then at the number three, spot we have the Azurai Vanguard Ferris so this one is the next one after you've upgraded from the veteran Ferris you get to the Vanguard Ferris and this one is solidly better than the last so a lot of people will discuss when it comes to your tier 4 or tier 5 troops sometimes it's better to stay with tier 4 because of certain loadouts this one it's definitely not the vet uh, the Vanguard Ferris is one of the best ca heavy cavalry units in the game and it's definitely better than the veteran Ferris so this one has pretty dang solid armor and weapons you can see it's some of the heaviest armor that you'll find on any Azurai Azurai troops. As a rule, Azurai troops have significantly lighter armor than most other factions. I'll just hover over the stats so you can see them. So our riding here is 170, being one of the highest cavalry units in the game. They're just very good at riding. So you're going to find their horses are, are nice and fast, and they're very nimble. They control them very well, so they're much better at braking and, and special maneuvers. Polearm stat on this is quite high at 200, and we have a nice uh, long polearm here. We also have throwing weapons that uh, are quite good, and you can see our throwing skill is 140, so these ones can also also double as a skirmisher type mounted unit so that's another thing the Azurai Vanguard Ferris is very versatile they can either be shock troops heavy cavalry charging in with their lances or throwing weapons and because this one has a decently high one-handed stat of 170 and is typically equipped with a one-handed weapon and a shield and it has heavy armor passably high athletics at 90 it also makes a pretty dang good infantry unit if you're using them in a siege so the Azurai Vanguard Ferris are very very good I think they're very underrated in people's heavy cavalry ranking a lot of people will rank other ones ahead of this one that I disagree with I seriously su uh, suggest trying them out especially if you want to play as the Azurai so that's number three let's move on to number two all right we at number two we have a lot of people's favorite but not my favorite and I'll get to the reasons for that why but it is number two and it is an extremely good uh, unit it's the Imperial Elite Cataphract so these ones are again going to be the upgrade from the last one that we already covered the Cataphract and these ones again are well worth upgrading to uh, you can see our riding skill is 200 here so again it's going to be one of the best cavalry units in the game they just know how to handle a horse polearm is 260 and they have an extremely long polearm which is nice and you'll see this in cavalry on cavalry charges or cavalry 
artillery on infantry with long pikes. Uh, charges, the Imperial Elite Cataphract has a really long spear, so it gives them a reach advantage that oftentimes you'll see saving them from dying, like I said, in a heavy cavalry charge. They also have extremely good armor. You can see on our little person there that we have some seriously comprehensive Imperial armor. Uh, basically no weak points in this. Uh, on a lot of units they'll have, like, you can see that the arms are weaker, so slashes from the side will be more dangerous, or legs or something like that. The cataphracts are not like that. These are very well armored, as are their horses. And again, we have a nice high one-handed, so they also work very well on foot. So that the nice thing about the Imperial Cataphracts and the Imperial Elite Cataphracts is that they're some of the best heavy cavalry units in the game, but if they're off their horse, they're also some of the best infantry units of the game. Now, they won't outclass dedicated infantry units, but they'll outclass, or at least dedicated tier 5 inf infantry units, but they will outclass pretty much everything else. So great, great heavy cavalry and also excellent infantry units. So the Imperial Elite Cataphract take the number two spot. The only downside again is that this is a specific noble tree, but again, because there's so many Imperial sediments, you'll find it's pretty easy to recruit a bunch of these guys if you focus on them. So that's number two. Let's move on to the number one best heavy cavalry in the game. All right, and so at number one, we have the Vlandian Banner Knights, and these guys are just the bee's knees. They're the absolute best heavy cavalry in the game, and and this is not just based on stats and everything, this is based on a lot of testing. I've got hundreds of hours into this game, over 100 of them, about 150 probably since the full release, so with everything currently going on, and just... On the field, nothing beats the Vlandian Banner Knights. They're so good. The Imperial Elite Cataphracts come close, and the Azurai Vanguard Ferris definitely have their strengths, but the Vanguard, uh, the Vlandian Banner Knights are just basically unbeatable in large numbers. So these ones for stats, you're going to see some of the highest stuff in the game. 200 for riding, 260 for pole arms, 220 for one-handed, and uh, we have an Athletics of 60. So they're a little bit less good on their feet than a lot of the other ones, but they are just a dominating force as, uh, as cavalry. You can see we've got the heavy chain armor for our horse, and of course the excellent coat over plate uh, coat of plates over mail armor for our soldier and and a full covering face helmet and just excellent armor all around some of the best in the game fantastic troops and the banner knights also have an advantage of being able to couch their lances which is huge uh, it gives them a serious damage boost uh, for shock cavalry basically so the imperial elite cataphract has greater reach but if the vlandian banner knight hits which they often do because of their excellent armor they'll take their they'll take out the imperial elite cataphracts into charge and this is what made me make the banner knights take the first spot because that couched lance makes all the difference in the world much like the elite cataphracts uh these also make a pretty solid infantry unit their lower athletic score makes them a little bit slower but they are definitely very well armored their stats are nice and high and they have excellent armor and weapons so they double as both but really if you want to have heavy cavalry and you want to focus on that, the Vlandian Banner Knight is going to be the all-around best you can do. And you have the added advantage of all of their troops being pretty good. So the Vlandian Squire, where it starts with, is nothing special, but even when you get to the Vlandian Gallant, you're already better than some, like, Tier 3 and 4 Sturgeon troops and regular troops from all over the place. The Vlandian Knight's even better. Vlandian Champion already showed up on this list, and I would argue is even better than the Kuzate Heavy Lancer in some regards. It's just a little bit harder to get. There are a lot of advantages advantages with going with an army of banner knights and one of them is just that yeah you'll have a mixed match at a lot of times but the lesser troops are still going to be better than a lot of other cavalry troops in the game so that is all five of our top five i know i covered more like seven but that's just because some of them tied pretty well Ultimately, in the end, the Vlandian Banner Knight is just the best heavy cavalry in this game. So, uh, that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. I was planning on doing all sorts of battles and everything in the background, and I went around and I made sure I recruited tons and tons of troops, so I had full armies of each of these. But then when I was doing it, I was like, I could just show it in the menu here and, and like, just show you the stats so you could look at them <laughs> and all that sort of stuff. Plus, uh, in this playthrough that I'm on here, I don't have all that many enemies left, as you may be able to tell from this map. So there aren't really that many en uh, armies that would be that impressive to show anyway. But that is all for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you subscribe if you did enjoy it, because obviously there's going to be lots more. But we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you like this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.